What's up, beaters? Welcome to yet another action-packed episode of Got Faded Japan, and I am your host, Johnny. And as you fine folks know, Got Faded Japan is about, uh, <laughs> oh, tonight, I guess it's uh, one dude, a whole lot of booze, Japan and the news. That's right. I'm located in Tokyo, Japan. I'm your host, Johnny. And uh, yes, uh, Jeremy, he's sick. He's like really sick. And uh, don't worry, it's not Corona. It's not anything bad, but he is sick tonight. And uh, Tom, Tom's still MIA. Nobody knows where that guy is. He's in a park. He's under a rock. Who knows where Tommy is? Uh, hopefully he's okay. And uh, I guess I'm just drinking... Oh, by myself, just podcasting, oh, by myself again. Actually, I'm not podcasting all by myself because there are, I, I don't even know how many people are out there right now. Uh, we're on YouTube Live on this camera right here, and uh, I'm going to upload this video on YouTube. And uh, yeah, so if you're listening to me right now and you're drinking, I'm not by myself. I'm with all you guys out there, and uh, right now, I, j -j 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 ah, I am drinking, well, I just opened up a... Ishi, no, Isekado, an Isekado Pale Ale. I've never seen this beer before. I was at 7-Eleven in a Meguroku in, in Tokyo, and I saw this beer, and I was like, holy smokes, I've never seen this beer before. I got to try it because there's one thing that Johnny loves, and that's trying new beers. I love seasonal beers, and right now it's kind of like the end of spring, and summer's almost here. Well, Pretty much summer's kind of here. I'm wearing shorts. So summer's here. And uh, yeah, we're going to get uh, all the new summer ales. And I'm pretty happy. And uh, here's this right here. Let's take a look for all you guys on YouTubes. And you should be signing up for YouTubes because we got a lot of great stuff for you on YouTube. And also, also, if you are watching us on YouTube, be sure to stay to the very end because we got some amazing stories. We got some amazing stories. Um, even though I'm here all by my lonesome, I will, in fact, read the top five with you faders. I'm not by myself. I'm here with you cats. And I'm going to roll hard with these stories. And they're good. Um, first off, hi, Kampai. Hi, Kampai, everybody. Hi, Kampai. Hi, good to see you. How you doing? How you rolling tonight? Oh, wow. Holy smokes. Isekado. Isekado. I don't know much about this beer. I've never seen this beer before. It tastes great. It kind of tastes like... Uh... Mm. Oh, my God. kind of tastes like Sierra Nevada. It tastes kind of like... um. Uh, a less potent Sierra Nevada, if that makes any sense. But this is good. This is good. And it's got an interesting symbol on the front with uh, two roosters, two chickens, roosters. I don't know. Um, and uh, it looks like it's satanic. <laughs> that does not look like kanji, all right? I've seen tens of thousands of kanjis in my lifetime, and this does not look like kanji. If this is new kanji, I am stoked. Bring on new kanji. I'm sick of old kanji. <laughs> <laughs> I want new kanji! And uh, this kanji looks awesome if it is kanji. I don't think it's kanji. I think this is some kind of a symbol. Maybe maybe it represents the hop gods of the north. I don't know. Mm. But this beer tastes fantastic. It tastes absolutely fantastic. What's the alcohol content? Uh, alcohol, where is it? Oh, God, it's written so small. Isn't that illegal? Ah, great for the audio podcast. This is fantastic. I'm looking for alcohol. Alcohol, 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 alcohol. 5%. It's 5% alcohol. Yes. Mm. And I've said it before, and I'll say it a million other times. 5% is a good number for beer. 5.5 5. 5 is actually better, but once you start rolling into that like 8%, 9%, 12% beers... Fuck off. You're making vodka or whiskey. You're making whiskey at that point, dude. Oh, God. I hate it when I drink a beer and I taste just alcohol. Like, I mean, it's terrible when you're like, oh, God, alcohol it tastes like hairspray. Ugh. Plus some kind of ugh, flavor, I guess. I don't know. But then, but this beer right here, they're, they're doing it right. This tastes fantastic. Oh, man. So what's going on in Tokyo, Johnny? <laughs> I'll tell you guys. Okay. Uh, let's see. Within my last week, I had some excitement. Uh, a little bit of action went down in Shibuya. Um, let's see. Last Saturday, e no, 
last Friday evening. Um, me and my friend Koji, we had a rock and roll event at uh, my my friend's uh, bar, club, whatever. And it's called Knob, Shibuya Knob. And um, yes, it was epic. We had five amazing bands perform and uh, it was a great night. Uh, yeah, pff, unbelievable. But that's not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the aftermath. Man, our event started at, uh, what time? It started at 8 o'clock, and I showed up, and Koji showed up, the band showed up, and they all played, and it was fantastic. Pretty Lich was there. We love Pretty Lich. Uh, yeah, Creepdown was there. Creepdown performed, and that was an awesome, awesome performance. It was super cool. Um, yeah, and after the show, we stuck around in the venue, and we're just drinking beers and stuff, you know, and we're there until about 12.30. And then uh, me, Scott, and a couple other guys, Scott's the lead singer of Creepdown, we decided to go to another bar, and um, we left We left the venue, and the venue is located in the heart of Shibuya, in this little area called Dogenzaka. And Dogenzaka for, I mean, Dogenzaka has been a wild place for, since the beginning of Shibuya, right? It's been, it's always been wild. It's, it's famously wild, right? But on that night, it was insane. There were so many tourists in that area that I don't think anybody was speaking Japanese. I think I was the only one in that street speaking Japanese. It was just full of tourists. And every single tourist was completely smashed. It, I, I don't know what happened. I don't know why or what was going on. But it's basically the ding, 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 the beginning of tourism in Japan. Well, not the beginning of tourism, but the beginning of wild tourism. Holy shit, dude. I saw these two British girls rolling around in the street. One was puking. The other one had her, her like skirt up where you could see her butt. And they're just like laughing and giggling and puking. And it was like, it was almost cartoonish. Like, oh, oh. And I'm just like, Jesus Christ, that is insane. There's another dude chasing this girl. She's screaming at the top of her lungs. I didn't know if it was a good scream or a bad scream. But I was like, whoa, look at that shit. I'm like getting involved. And then other people were just fucking falling out of bars and stuff bottles are getting broken fights are almost starting it was mayhem in shibuya on last friday dude last friday night was insane absolutely insane i was in the middle of it and i wanted to gtfo i was like get me out of here this is crazy oh my god it was nuts and um yeah the next day the next day i was nursing my hangover staying at home watching youtube and i was watching this one video that i kind of like it's um i don't i, I guess a, a youtube channel i guess whatever i was watching this youtube channel and the youtube channel is called code blue cam check this shit out code blue cam is like that old tv show cops but on but on crack but on amphetamines, it's insane. It's basically, it's like cops, the TV show cops, but instead of having a camera crew, they use their, their chest cameras, their, their body cameras, right? So you're watching their body cameras in, in, in real time for them, and it's pretty much, most of it's like unedited, and they're chasing down meth heads, rapists, murderers, car thieves, like the worst of worst people. It is it is so awesome. It is action-packed. I'm at the edge of my seat, super hungover, practically puking in my lap, and I don't care because there's just so much action. It is great. If you're watching it, fucking just like it, dude. Fucking just click the like, subscribe, fucking tell a friend, dude. Let's fucking blow these guys up because it is awesome. And if you haven't watched it, watch it. Code blue cam, dude. It is insane. And so I'm there on Sunday, Friday, Saturday, and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so hungover, but this is so awesome. This is so awesome. And then I started thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we had this in Japan? Wouldn't it be awesome if it was like Code Blue Cam Japan, where like all the cops in like Shibuya, I would say Shibuya, Ikebukuro, and let's say Shibuya, Ikebukuro, and Shinjuku. Cops in these three districts, basically, they had their cams, their body cams on, and they're fucking just streaming to the internet. I think that would be awesome. <clears throat> Now, usually, usually Tokyo is like a cool, safe, nice place. But on the weekends, especially on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, shit goes down. People get crazy. And tourists go fucking berserker. And holy smokes. I think that this would be insanely awesome to watch. I think that this, dude, this would be the biggest thing on the internet. 
cops running around in Japan, like fucking like, I don't know, using judo chops and wrestling like like crazy ass tourists that are like blackout drunk doing God knows what. Oh my God, the fist fights. Dude, you see fucking people from all over the world fist fighting. I mean, it would be like fucking Thunderdome and like 20 different languages. It would be insane. It would be great. It would be so entertaining. Um, Yeah, whoever can do this that's listening or watching this, definitely do it. I will be your first subscriber. I will design your, I'll design your logo. I'll make patches. I'll make t-shirts. I'll do anything I can to support you because I think that this is going to, that would take over the internet. I mean, right now, everybody's talking about AI, AI this, AI that. No, dude. Once there's a code, code blue cam for Japan, code blue cam Japan. Once we have that, holy smokes, dude, Nobody will be talking about AI taking our jobs and all that shit. No, man, that stuff would be over. Dude, oh, I would be glued to my sofa. I, Dude, if, oh my God, every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I'd just be streaming that shit glued to my sofa with like a 12-pack of beer. That's what I would do. Oh my God, all my hobbies would go out the window. Dude, paints, all my paints would dry out. My canvases would rot. <laughs> I just, and my liver would probably rot too. Mmm. <laughs> Oh my God, but you got to watch Code Blue Cam. I think it takes place in Wisconsin, somewhere in like uh, Wisconsin or Minnesota. Oh my God, which is pretty crazy, man. I Wherever that place is, I'm sure it's Wisconsin. It seems like Wisconsin, but I mean, God damn, dude. Wisconsin apparently is like the Florida of the North. That's what it is. The Florida of the North. Oh my God. Half the people they arrest don't have teeth. I don't know what's going on up there. I, I thought America had pretty good dental care, but not in Wisconsin. Or at least the criminals don't have teeth. Maybe it's meth or something. Who knows? But my God. Mm. So that was my my weekend. It was uh, basically a show, an incredible show. Uh, and seeing the mayhem of Shibuya and uh, recovering the rest of the weekend, watching watching YouTube. Oh, by the way, uh, yeah, we are on YouTube. Once again, subscribe to us. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much on our YouTube page. And if you really want to support this show, go down to Patreon. Give us a couple of bucks. We could really, really use it. Especially since uh, everything here is increasing increasing in price. My God, this beer here cost me, I don't know how much it costs. I paid like a thousand yen for all this shit. I guess it's not too bad. But still, we could use the money. More money, more booze. Man. Mm. This beer is pretty good. Oh, man. So yes, uh, tourism is here in full force. Please come down to Japan. Visit Japan. Japan is a beautiful country. The people are wonderful. The food is amazing. Uh, apparently right now, it's very cheap for anybody in Europe using the euro and especially dollars. If you got those American dollars, give them to Johnny. <laughs> no, I'm joking, kind of. But uh, yeah, come down to Japan because, I mean, your dollars are stretching. Um, I had a friend, um, the artist Jesse, a great tattoo artist, who was visiting Japan. He was actually showing his artwork for uh, Tokyo Art Tank, my art exhibition. And uh, yeah, for him, the exchange rate was pretty awesome. It was pretty, pretty awesome. Oh my gosh. Oh, and there's so much to buy here. So much cool stuff. I mean, I don't buy that much stuff. I'm not really a buy. Well, I mean, other than the shit I got behind me. But most of that stuff I made, my paintings or whatnot. But I don't really buy that much stuff. But I mean, if I came to Japan on a vacation, I would be buying the shit out of Akihabara. Holy smokes. I went down there recently. They got so much new Nintendo stuff. Oh, my God. And the Parko building in Shibuya. Forget about it. On the top floor, it's like Mario Zelda land. Oh, my God. There is so much Mario and Zelda stuff up there. They got statues bigger than me. And I'm not a big guy, but they're bigger than me. <laughs> they're huge. Oh, my God. I want to take one of those home and somehow fit it somewhere in my little apartment. Oh, man. Mm. Oh, fitters. Uh, uh, let's see here. I bill bird this as far as I could. <laughs> Talking about my weekend. What else can I talk about? The weather. Weather's getting warm. Rainy season's coming up. It's getting humid. <laughs> mm. All right. Without further ado, let's get into the news. All right, fitters. Here we go. Uh, let me pull up the news. Da, 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 got the news. We got to get some news like music. I think um, back in the day, some podcasts that used to read the like local news, they would have that da 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 da. Or is that more like show tunes? I think that's more like show tunes. 
Oh, man. Did anybody out there ever listen to Total Talk Nonsense? Total Talk Nonsense was like one of the first like top five podcasts. Like when I started listening to podcasts in like 2006, I think, there was a mediocre show, Total Talk Nonsense, Dignation, and Sick and Wrong, and maybe one more that I just can't think of. And a Total Talk Nonsense. I mean, these guys were like music engineers, and they're both musicians. Um, I think it was John and Scott. And uh, they used to read like crazy news in America. And uh, yeah, they had like this sound effects. They had all these sound effects. That was kind of cool. Something that I should totally do. Uh-oh, just got a message. Uh-oh. Okay, I'm going to answer that later. It wouldn't be polite to answer. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this. Hey, what's up? I'm Johnny, a.k.a. The Spill Tink, the one and only, and uh, today I'm going to make a popsicle painting. I'm really excited to do this. I've got all my paints here. It takes about this much paint to make a popsicle painting, and uh, I've got my two other most important ingredients. Very strong hot coffee. Oh, actually, that's not that hot, but still, it's strong coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got punk rock music. With these two things, nothing could go wrong. All right, with that said, let's rock.